If we wanted to provide something that really mattered to customers, we had to go through an enormous amount of change. First of all, single person household is rapidly growing, taking around 30%. Its new dawn delivery service even promises to go beyond Amazon Primes, providing 7 a.m. delivery for orders made before midnight the night before. Hello, 大家好，欢迎来到 Pierre 论道 The Pierre's Channel. 我是 Pierre. 啊，那么上一期啊啊，我跟大家分享了一下啊。这个所谓的这个韩国亚马逊啊，或者是这个韩国阿里巴巴的这个 Coupon 的 IPO 的情况啊，以及呢，他的这个 CEO 啊，这个啊 b o m Kim 啊，接收这个 CNBC 专访的视频啊，那么之后呢，我还是觉得有点啊意犹未尽啊，那么这两天呢，我做了一些这个 research 啊，那么今天呢，我就想跟大家啊一起分享一下一些分析师啊对这家公司啊这个前景的看法。啊，同时呢，也会分享啊一段呢，这个大概一年前吧，啊，这个 CNBC 的一个美女记者啊，这个到这个亲身到这个呃 Coupon 的这个韩国首尔的这个总部啊，啊，跟他的这个 CEO 啊面对面这个座谈啊访谈的这个视频，啊，那么同样呢，我也是啊配了配上了这个中英文的字幕啊，便于大家啊这个增加对这家公司的了解，啊，那么同时呢。也是会这个跟大家分享一些实用的啊，这个英语的词组和词汇，啊，那么大家同时呢也可以比较一下啊，他的这个 Coupon 的这个 Business Model 啊，这个运营模式啊，跟这个亚马逊啊，甚至是阿里巴巴啊有什么不一样？啊，那么大家一定要把这个视频看完啊，非常精彩，尤其是如果你想投资这个 Coupon 股票的话啊。啊，因为这几天呢、啊，刚刚出来一个消息，就是这家公司的一些啊内部股啊，就是会有一个所谓的这个 early lockup release 啊，这个就是员工的内部股啊提前释放出来，在这个市场上交易，那么这样势必会对这个呃、啊、股价会造成很大的波动啊。那么如果你是喜欢做期权的朋友啊，尤其是如果你做 sell put 或者是这个 credit spread 的话。啊，大家知道这个 implied volatility 啊，所谓的这个隐含波动率呢，就是一个宝啊，就是我们的宝贝啊，所以要好好把这个这个视频看完啊，了解一下这个公司的运作啊。如果是对期权这个有兴趣的朋友啊，可以参考一下我们之前做的啊一些关于这个期权交易策略的视频。好，那我们开始吧。Inside Coupons Fulfillment Center, just outside Seoul, this company has been dubbed the Amazon of South Korea and was recently ranked as the country's most valuable startup. We know the truck it's going to go into, the route it's going to be out on,、yeah. and then that tells us how it needs to be sorted here and when it needs to leave. That's propelled founder Bom Kim to billionaire status and made Coupon into a national icon. It's not an exaggeration to say that we are in every apartment complex and every apartment building. Uh, at least once a day. That's not bad for a guy who dropped out of Harvard Business School after just six months. I had a belief when I was in grad school that I had a very short window to really make something that had an impact. During a recent visit to Seoul, I got to sit down with the 41-year-old e-commerce CEO at Coupon's headquarters. And while he may have reached the heights of success now, he says he didn't exactly set out to become the next Jeff Bezos. 
In fact, when the $9 billion e-commerce giant started here in Seoul back in 2010, it was as a different business entirely. The shape of Coupang, the business model of Coupang, uh, what Coupang looks like today, went through a lot of change. When Kim dropped out of business school in the late 2000s, he initially started Coupang as a Groupon-style daily deals business. But as he noticed the growing scope of technology, he quickly transitioned the company into a third-party online marketplace. It was a success. Within three years, Kim says the company crossed a billion dollars in sales and was on the cusp of an IPO. But at the 11th hour, he pulled the deal and radically changed the business model. Convinced he could build something better. There had been this nagging feeling for months where we had to be honest with ourselves and said, yeah. it, once you go public, it's much harder to really change your direction. And what was the platform we had built? Were the services and experiences that we're providing for our customers creating a 5% difference? Or were we creating that kind of world where the, the customers we loved, you know, their jaws would drop? And the reality was no. If we wanted to provide something that really mattered to customers, we had to go through an enormous amount of change. Mm. We had to change our entire technology stack, the way we, we did business, our business model. Right. Um, That's a bold move when you're on the crux of an IPA. It, it was very, very difficult. And I think that was the most difficult, but the, the choice that I'm most proud of. So Coupon was born again, this time as an end-to-end e-commerce platform designed to manage the full customer journey from desktop to door. South Korea's e-commerce market has been growing rapidly over the past decade. This year, online sales are projected to expand by 18% to hit over $100 billion, ranking it in fifth place globally after China, the US, the UK and Japan. By 2023, it's expected to jump to third place. That's thanks in part to fast internet speeds and high smartphone penetration in a country famed for tech conglomerates like LG and Samsung. But it's also reflective of its culture. South Korea has some of the longest working hours in the world, meaning leisure time is scarce and consumers are willing to pay a premium for convenience. Curious to learn more, I met up with Jade Lee, an analyst at market research firm Euromonitor, to hear her take on the Korean market landscape. There are several social factors which makes e-commerce really successful in South Korea. First of all, single-person household is rapidly growing, taking around 30%. This single-person household do not have sufficient time to go offline shopping. The second one is the um, well-developed digital infrastructure, especially the mobile simple payment platforms. And then the last one is the well-structured logistics system. South Korea is relatively smaller, so it is able to set up logistics quicker and easier compared to other countries. Kim responded to those market characteristics in spades. That included Coupang creating its own UPS-style logistics business, Rocket Delivery, designed to provide super speedy, personalized service. The only models that we had seen um, were primarily like that of Amazon, which had built out an impressive fulfillment uh, infrastructure, but had relied in large part to um, very advanced infrastructure that had been built out by the U.S. Postal Service. And at the time, we, we, we really envied that. So we built, uh, again, not only the fulfillment infrastructure, but the largest directly controlled fleet of trucks and drivers to deliver those products in multiple ways throughout the day. So what seemed like a curse at that time, that we had to build this entire infrastructure and build a technology to integrate it all, end to end by ourselves from scratch, uh, ended up becoming a huge blessing. Today, Coupang's more than 5,000 delivery drivers, known as Coupang Men, deliver 99.3% of orders within 24 hours. Its new dawn delivery service even promises to go beyond Amazon Primes, providing 7 a.m. delivery for orders made before midnight the night before. You can get lobster, fresh cakes. If you have, if you have a birthday, breakfast. fresh lobster, we actually have, <laughs> have breakfast foods as well. But if you have a birthday, you can get a cake in the morning. If your printers run out of ink uh, or you need a new computer, mm. you can get a computer before 7 a.m. That service is not only a nice to have, but a necessity for a business that sees a third of its orders come in between 10 p.m. and midnight, says Kim. We realized that most customers were ordering at night. 
And if they wanted more selection delivered to them faster, the best experience would be if they could order it before they go to bed, wake up and find it in front of the door. It's like Christmas. It, it, yeah, it's magical. <laughs> According to Kim, that has helped set him apart in a wildly competitive market. Last year, the country's largest e-commerce site also ranked as consumers' preferred online retailer, outranking local competitors such as G-Market and 11 Street. Kim says the app has now been downloaded by over 25 million Koreans, representing around half of the country's 51 million person population. The company today is over $10 billion um, in sales, well over $10 billion in sales, growing 60% year over year. That didn't happen because of something we did, you know, this year. That popularity has investors excited too. As of November 2018, the company has attracted more than $3.6 billion from investors, including SoftBank, Sequoia Capital and BlackRock, giving the company an estimated valuation of $9 billion. It's easy to have a dream and fail if you don't have shareholders and investors who are willing to take the journey with you for the long term. Kim now plans to pump that funding into growing the business in Korea, building out its food delivery service and potentially expanding into new markets. Coupang is still um, focusing on the domestic market and trying to expand there. But with those financial investments from SoftBank, Coupang is expected to um, go in further to other APEC regions. The environment that Korea has, the, the high urbanization, the, the extreme population density, and the, the IT infrastructure, those are things that I think will be shared by customers in many areas, many regions, especially in Asia as they, as they modernize. We have offices all over the world. Uh, we have uh, an office in Silicon Valley, in mm -hmm. Seattle, in Beijing, in Shanghai. So in many ways, we are, we are building, uh, we've, we're building a global company. But ultimately, Kim says his main mission is to remain committed to customer service. And if that means reinventing the business once again, well, at least he has the experience. I don't know if I can tell you that six months from now or six years from now uh, that we will look you know, similar to what we look today. OK. But I can tell you that we will always be a company, a technology company that is trying to leverage what we can from human ingenuity mm -hmm. and technology to, to um, to obsess about some aspect of customers' lives that we want to improve exponentially. That will be a constant. Subscribe,订阅我们的频道,然后点赞,分享,还有开启这个下期节目提醒的这个小铃铛。Bye bye.